Welcome to Instant Replay for MLS Match Day 6. I am Andrew Weeby, joined by former FIFA and MLS referee Christina Unkler. We're going through the most controversial calls in Major League Soccer. Christina, two words. Pineapple pizza. Two more words. Red card. See ya. Don't need a VAR for this one. We know that is a foul from Christina Uncle. You do not put fruit on your pizza. We start with a call that had Greg Vanny fuming in Los Angeles. Stoppage time. 94 minutes in. Mark Delgado crossing from the right flank. Nuhu defending. Ball is blocked. But if you look closely, where does this ball hit on Nuhu's body? It hits on his right elbow. No review is recommended by VAR Soren Stoika. And Greg Vanny, well, he's got opinions on this. I believe this. This is in the silhouette. This is in the silhouette. This is not in the silhouette. This is a handball. That I understand Greg Vanny and where his mind is at. He's been through the blender on the handball lot. What do you think about this play and these decisions by the referee crew? I can appreciate the word, the fact that Vandy's using the word silhouette because he understands the point is to make yourself tight and skinny as a defender here. And Uhu with that chicken wing makes this debatable where typically when a defender puts their arms behind the back by default, they are trying to do so. However, this is a case of first impression that I've seen where they've made themselves bigger. I still prefer Chapman's no call on the decision. And since it's gray and debatable, it's the correct decision by Stoica not to recommend this down because there's some debate to it. But I think the preferred decision will be no handling. To me, no handball as well. Though I do think Nuhu is very, very smart in getting those hands up high behind his back and getting his elbows out just that little bit extra. What sways it for me is imagining where Nuhu's arms would be, what his silhouette would be, if instead they weren't behind his back, they were straight down. And in that case, we would never call this a penalty. I think they'd be in generally the same spot as they are now, with not very much, if at all, daylight between the body and the arm. I'm okay with the no handball decision on this one. All right, let's go to New England. Revs hosting NYCFC, 61st minute. This is a game that ends 1-1, therefore this play really matters. Dylan Barrero crossing, ball deflecting, ball in the back of the net. Luis Barraza can't quite get to it in the NYCFC net. Look where Bo is. Look where that deflection occurs and where the goalkeeper's eyes are. It's a direct line between all three. You see Barraza, that little delay to react. He still gets a hand on it, but I don't think he sees the moment of deflection. I don't think he sees the trajectory of that cross because of Bo's presence in an offside position, thereby affecting his ability to play the deflection once it occurs. I don't think Gustavo Bo should get an advantage for being in an offside position. I'm okay with this goal being waved off. Weeby, I agree with you on that one, and it's because, as you hit it on the head, it's that flight and the trajectory from the ball that Barraza is first hit on that. So I understand people's concern about this mitigating factor of it coming off the defender's head, but that's not when the offense first occurred. It occurred right when the ball was hit, didn't have that sight on it, and that's what people need to understand will be called as interfering with an opponent from this point on. All right, let's switch gears. We're heading to San Jose, Houston, the PK Bowl, as some might call it. Fifth minute, Christian Espinoza cutting the ball back. Clearly, it hits Teenage Ajibi, the Dynamo defender, right in the right arm slash hand. No call on the field by referee Tori Pinto, but VAR Kevin Terry Jr. recommends review. Pinto goes to the monitor, and yes, that's a penalty for a handball. Do you like it, Christina? I don't like the recommendation, and I don't like the graphic that was sent down, and the graphic that was sent down was the angle from behind the goal, and if you take a look at this, and this is the only angle you take a look at, you feel as if his hand is further away and outside of his silhouette. However, if you take a look down right in the back of Teenage, you can see that his arm is not outside his silhouette, but behind his back in a natural position, and this is the angle that we needed to show. The other one is deceptive prefer not this recommendation and I prefer not having a handling on this call. I agree with you on that one. 40th minute, Corey Baird goes down under pressure from Michael Baldissimo and Tori Pinto calls the penalty on the field. When I watch this, I think Corey Baird goes down very, very, very easily. So many varies that I would like this not to be a penalty. Agreed, the, what Corey Baird is pulling up is more of his right leg than where his left leg in the actual contact is. I agree, Kevin Terry can't send this down for a VAR recommendation for overturn, but I don't think it's enough for us to have a penalty on it. All right, we keep it moving. Was Coco Carasquilla fouled by Rodriguez on this play? No penalty called on the field and Kevin Terry Jr. did not intervene. And I think Pinso and Terry Jr. 
got this one right. I do think that there is contact and a potential foul on this play. Pinto could have called it. She's there tracking. But I think that contact occurs outside the penalty area, which therefore would not give Kevin Terry Jr. the opportunity to intervene. Look where this knee-to-knee -knee contact occurs. If you're going to call this a foul, is it inside the 18? I don't think so. You see that full foot of Karaskia outside the 18 at the time. The knee tracks above. To me, this would be outside. But how about this one, Christina? Cade Cal dribbles into the penalty area. Ethan Bartlow seems to have tripped him, but Cal keeps going, and then he goes down. Tory Pinto allows play to continue, but eventually Kevin Terry Jr. recommends a penalty. Pinto goes to the monitor, points to the spot. That's the game-winning goal for San Jose. What do you think? I think it's a good recommendation. It's a very clear tripping, and it's one that you want that camera angle to see and be able to appreciate it. Good recommendation for Kevin Terry Jr. to get this one correct. To the frozen banks of Lake Ontario, we go Toronto, Charlotte, 39th minute. Richie Larea gets a little shove, maybe a little bit of contact in the feet as well from Charlotte's Jalen Lindsay. Is this enough for a penalty for you, Christina? None called on the field. An upper body contact one. Is there a little bit of extension of the arm? The answer is yes, the facts don't lie, but is this enough for us to want to call a penalty kick? And the answer is going to be no. It isn't one where we're saying, if the referee doesn't give it, recommend it down. It's good for a no recommendation, and I prefer the no penalty on this call. Now we saw Sasha Kleshin and Bradley Wright Phillips shoving each other around the studio on MLS 360 after they watched this Michael Bradley goal. Did he push Harrison Awful? Would you have recommended review here for a foul? Eunice Marcacci did. Rami Tushan went to the board and said, nah, not for me. He stayed consistent, called this no foul, good goal. What would you like to see on this play? Consistency is correct, right? If, if upper body shows aren't enough, then it, Rami took a look at this one and said, not enough for him as well. And the referee has the final decision. Personally, I don't like this one because of the tactical nature of knowing that Awful is right there about to make head contact and just enough of that extension of the arm in the push. Unlike Sasha saying he only pushed him with the finger, there was a little bit more given on to that. However, going back to where the preferred decision is going to be is unless it's really, really big, they don't want to be sent down for a recommendation because it's not big enough for it to say penalty that everybody won't be debating about. In the Cincinnati-Miami game, 35th minute, Marco Angulo originally had committed a penalty per Nima Sagafi, the referee, but Mariscal called Sagafi to the monitor and said, look, it happened outside the area, and you can see clearly it did. This is good use of video review. Here's one the video assistant referee could not get involved in, Orlando-Nashville. First goal, Hani Mukhtar's fouled. The ball's rolling. Is it still rolling? When Hani Mukhtar plays the pass to Papa Pico, the Pico lobs the goalkeeper with and scores. I don't think it is, Christine. I think if you look really closely, oh, right before Hani hits it, that ball is not moving anymore. I don't see any forward rotation, any top spin. I see it frozen. And either way, VAR can't get involved, right? No, VAR can't get involved, but it's important to remember the purpose behind why the ball should not be moving when it's kicked is so that that attacking team doesn't gain an unfair advantage. And we be just as you mentioned, I think it just ends right before Mukhtar hits it. Why? Because the panel is not making any kind of rotation at that point. But once again, we got to remember the purpose of this law is that there is no unfair advantage. One would not argue if it was moving a barely a centimeter, that that was the reason why they ended up getting a goal on this. But I'm not so sure Chicago DC, 68th minute, they called this a foul on Taxi Fountas. Weeby, I'm going to debate with you on this one. I actually think this is the correct call in the camera angle that sells me, although I can see your argument from the other one, is the camera angle behind the goal looking straight down. As a defender, Chivas is always going to take that space and try to protect that ball in his defensive area. For that, he's entitled to that space. I'm going to lean more towards the defender, maybe because I was a defender, but I like this decision on the field for foul coming out. All right, we finish with a clear dog so red so by Rudy Camacho. 22nd minute, Vancouver, Montreal. Tim Ford's the referee. Jose Carlos Rivero is the VAR on this one. Initially, Ford points to the spot. You can understand why. He's trying to figure out where on this line does this foul occur. Rivero sends him to the monitor, says no PK, but still red. Why is it still red? Well, that's because Camacho does not play the ball on this one. He goes for the rugby tackle, and when you do that and you're the last man, you are going to be sent off. Well done to the referee crew on that one. And well done to you, Christina, for putting up with my opinions. And thank you to Rich, our producer and editor, on this edition of Instant Replay. We'll see you next time.